Hey there everyone, Phil Cho here and welcome to my channel. A Stardew Valley is a huge game. It has so much content that for some it may seem a bit overwhelming. So I decided to compile a big tips and tricks video where I talk about all of the things that may help you out on your farm. As this was made after the 1.5 update, it will contain some information about that update as well. And if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel so you get notified of all of my future updates. I really hope this video helps you out in your own playthroughs and shows you some new things as well. So let's begin! The first tip that I have for everyone was added in the 1.5 update and that is the telephone. You can buy the telephone from day one from Robin shop which you can use to contact all of the merchants around town to know if they're working and to also check their wares which is super helpful where you save on time you would have spent otherwise to go there. And for gas you can even find out a daily special which can save you on time. I really recommend getting this as it would help you out a lot but don't get it too fast as you would need some gold for the next tip and that is save your gold for the 13th of spring. This day is really important as you can purchase strawberry seeds from Pierre for 100 gold each at the festival. Strawberry seeds are really important for you since they provide a huge financial boost because they sell for quite a lot and buying as much of them as you can on the 13th can bring you a lot of profit in the future, unlocking more things as well, so keep this in mind. Another tip that I have for everyone is the chests are your best friends in the game. Forget about the villagers since they don't offer any storage space for your items, but chests do. You can make a lot of chests and put them all around the valley where you move frequently so if you find some items you need but can't take them with you, just pop them into the chest and get them the next time you go there. They are the hoarders best friends, like me since I always want to save some of the items that I find, which leads me up to the next tip. Hoarding is good. Well not in excessive amounts but in moderate amounts it can be super helpful for you in the long run. Most of the requests that the villagers put out are about some items they need for various different reasons and having those in chests in moderate quantities can help you finish those requests even when the item is out of season, or you need it even for the community center bundles, so always try to have a few of them stored and you'll quickly see the benefit in it. And speaking about chests, to craft a huge number of those you would need a lot of wood and to get it at the start you would waste a lot of energy chopping down all of the trees on the farm while also clearing them and losing any future wood sources. You should always leave the stumps of the trees since they also spread seeds, making more trees grow, refreshing your lumber sources. But planting seeds is not beneficial since the seeds are needed for something else, which is also important. And that is, you should always gather the seeds to craft field snacks. At the beginning of your new playthrough, Field snacks can give you a lot of extra energy from which you can continue to function and use on your farm. To craft a field snack, you would need one of each tree seed, which at the start you would have a lot of them by just chopping down the trees. But remember, you would need foraging level 1 in order to get the trees to drop seeds firstly, as well as getting the field snack recipe, so wait until that before you start cutting everything you need on the farm. While we're still talking about trees, when you unlock tappers at foraging level 3, you should start using them frequently as the sap will be really beneficial to you towards the late game. The different kinds of sap are used in making the various artisan equipment, so stacking up on them from the start is a really good idea. Also for more sap you could also tap the trees at the bus stop, train station or even the desert since you can make your tree utopia there where the villagers don't move frequently without them destroying your trees. Always check all of the requests that the villagers put on Pierre's shop and also when you unlock the special requests notice board in front of Mayor Lewis's house you should start completing those as well since they will give you really amazing rewards when you complete them. Some of them are seasonal meaning if you don't complete one in a season you would need to wait to get the request after a whole year. Another really useful tip for everyone is when you start on some farms you would get some extra decorational bushes that sometimes can get in your way where you won't be able to build or use that spot efficiently. You should know that you can remove some of them by clearing out the space for your use. 
To do this, you will just need a copper or higher grade axe. Just a heads up though, you can remove some of them, but not all of them, where we will always have a few of them in the way that we can just build around. When you start the game for the first time, you should always check the game menu and set your preferred options because there are a lot of helpful additions there. You can set to see where you hit with your tool, which can save you on wasted energy, and also the zoom buttons, which can be really helpful to you when you zoom out since you have a bigger field of view where you won't miss any extra forageable items or more. The next tip that I have is about the vendors in the game. The vendors outside Pelican Town are really important and you should always check on them whenever you can. The traveling merchant is the first one you would see and you can visit it in the Cinderstaff Forest every Friday and Sunday, which can be really helpful in getting some rare items you can use for yourself or to complete the community center bundles. While the desert and ginger island vendors are really special, since they offer a rotating stock depending on the days which can be really important to have. On certain days you can get some ordinary items, while on some days you can get some really important and rare items that can help you out immensely in your playthrough. For example, on the very last day of the season, the island trader on Ginger Island trades a Galaxy Soul for a radioactive bar. And another really important tip that I have is that when you unlock the Crystallarium for the first time, you should focus instantly on duplicating Jade. I know that you would be enticed to duplicate Diamonds for the extra cash, but Jade will have a much higher and valuable use later on in the game. That leads us to the next tip, which is you should never craft staircases, and you should only buy them. As I mentioned before, some vendors have some certain stock on certain days, and the desert vendor sells the most important one on Sundays, which is the staircase, and it sells for one jade, making it really important to get in the game. To craft one staircase you need 99 stone, which is really expensive and a bother to farm, but getting one with only one jade that you can simply duplicate all the time will be a really beneficial step for your Skull Caverns expeditions. Another tip that I have for everyone out there is about the fall rare event, where in the fall season any full grown tree or stump has a small chance to turn into a mushroom tree, which can add a bit of a variety to your farm. It's always nice to save some trees for the fall season, where you will have a higher chance on getting a mushroom tree for your farm. You can also put a tapper on it to get some extra mushrooms for selling, and it can make your farm look pretty amazing as well. When building at a wizard, don't only focus on the war pillar since the Junimo huts can be a really useful item as well. When you build a Junimo hut, little Junimos will go out and collect all of the nearby crops and store them neatly in the hut, where you can pick them up at a later date after the stockpile. But things don't end there. Did you know that you could control the color of the Junimos that appear on the farm? Well, by putting a different color gem inside the hut you can change the color of the Junimos that come out of it. This is something that for me is really fun and neat, and knowing that such a thing was implemented in a game is really amazing, and I think that not many know about this feature as well. While we're still on the topic about the wizard, did you know that you can move buildings by using the magical table in the wizard's tower after you acquire enough friendship points with him? This is something really useful for all of those days that Robin is not working and the bonus part is that the shop at the wizard's tower isn't manned, so you can use its services anytime, at any day, without any issue. Did you know that the geode crushers are a bit overpowered? Well, not exactly overpowered as there is a slight glitch that you can use to get a certain duplicate gem. The trick to this is to craft a geode crusher and put it into clean shop. Afterwards, you should just open up geodes you have at Clint's, and if you get a prismatic shard or something else which is valuable and you need it, just put the next geode into the geode crusher, which in turn will duplicate the last thing you got from Clint. So if by any chance you manage to break open a prismatic shard from a geode, pop the next one in the geode crusher and you will get another one as well. So this is a neat way to get some extra valuable gems from the geodes. 
When you first take a step into the mines, you will notice that the pathway on the right is blocked by some rocks. When you hit them with your pickaxe, you will get a notification that you need to upgrade your tool in order to break those rocks. But did you know that you can use a simple cherry bomb to blast open those rocks and gain access to the dwarf, which is way more easier and obtainable? The only issue is that you need to have donated all of the dwarf scrolls in the museum to open up the shop and talk to the dwarf, but this is still something nice to know. The skills in Stardew Valley are really important to the player, and you level them up depending on the action you're taking. Foraging is one of the most overpowered professions in the game, due to two of the perks that you can choose from, which are the Gatherer and the Botanist perk. The Gatherer perk gives you a chance for a double harvest of a forageable item, while the Botanist perk makes every forageable item Iridium quality, which can boost your money making by a lot. So that's why I think the foraging profession is one of the most overpowered ones in the game. The next tip that I have also concerns the foraging profession, and that is how you can level it up faster. When you go around the map and gather foraging items, you gain experience, and the same goes for chopping down trees. But there is another really neat way you can get experience faster, and that is by planting wild seeds on your farm. All of the wild seeds on your farm will give you foraging experience, which you can use to level up the profession faster. Relationships with villagers are important, as it's also required for the end game of Stardew Valley. As your relationships grow, you can get items in the mail, special cutscenes or recipes from the villagers, which can help you a lot. By gifting gifts, you gain more friendship points, but if you gift a villager on their birthday, you can get a ton of friendship points which can be used to more easily gain hearts with the villagers. So to keep track of all of the birthdays, it's a really good idea to buy the calendar from Robin's place, which you can place at your house and you can keep track of everyone's birthday in the town. When you start a brand new farm, always aim to gather 300 wood to repair the bridge at the beach. You can quite easily gather that amount of wood, and opening that area will give you access to a lot of future income and foraging experience as well. For tip number 23, you should always check the TV channels since that is a really important part of the game. The TV will give you information for your daily luck, teach you new cooking recipes and also show you the weather, which you can use to plan your days ahead. Tip number 24 is something that I learned over time by playing, and that is, you can create your own personal timer for your production shed. You can place a keg or a preserve jar outside the shed, and with that you can keep track when the items are ready inside the shed. This is something that can make your life easier in the game, so you don't go around checking the sheds every single day. Beehives are the way to go. Well, they aren't as worth as the wine make, but still, beehives are a really great source of income for a lot of farms out there. If you use the flowers next to the beehives, you can get flower honey, which sells for more than the regular one, with the highest being the fairy rose honey. You can use this to your advantage on the ginger island farm, making the whole left area a beekeeping zone, which can earn you a lot of gold every 4 days. I made a guide on that, so feel free to check it out in the description below. If you're ever looking for someone in the town, a really easy way to find them is to just go to the saloon, since in the evening hours most of the villagers can be found there. It's a good way to spend the time and give them gifts since they can all be found in a single spot. Did you know you can change the color of some of the buildings on your farm? To do this you just need to visit Robin shop and choose the paint option, which then you can decide on a color for your house, coop, barn and sheds. This is a really nice addition where you have more control over the look of your farm and you can make the ideal layout with it. Now for a tip that is quite important for all of those dungeon explorers out there. Did you know that if you go to the mines or skull caverns on a bad luck day, it won't affect the chance of finding letters from monsters, since the bad luck only affects the chance for finding letters from the rocks, so you can still go explore the dungeons even on those days. For fishing, at the start it can be a bit harder to catch some of the fish using the bamboo rod, which you get from Willy as a gift. But if you go inside his shop and buy the training rod, you can use that to level up your fishing until level 5. 
after which you can get the fiberglass rod. The training rod allows you to catch only the basic fish and it makes it much more easier to catch them, so you won't make a lot of gold using it, but you would level up your profession much faster, allowing you at the end of the day to use the fiberglass rod much quicker. I would often find myself in situations that I would faint before going to bed because the bed was too far or if the dog was blocking the side, so I couldn't get in. But with a 1.5 update, they made it so that you could finally move your bed, allowing you access to it from anywhere in the house. If you want the most optimal and safe position, I would just place it next to the door so you have a quick start and also at the end of the day, you can just jump in and sleep. Tip number 31. The artisan profession is too overpowered, so from all of the professions in the game, that one has the biggest advantage and the greatest perk at the end which is the artisan goods are worth 40% more, meaning everything you process into kegs, preserve jars, beehives, casks will have a 40% price increase giving you a lot of money in return making this profession for me one of the best in the game. And speaking about professions, did you know that the skill tree updates in real time? When you open the skill tab you will see the squares you need to fill in order to level up but those update in real time so you can check your progress and see whether you level up on that given day. So when you go to bed, you will get the level up notification. For tip number 33, making a farm efficient is always a good thing since you would save on a lot of time that way. A good tip that I have for everyone is that you can move your shipping bin wherever you want, so you would make it more accessible and quicker to get to. I sometimes move it near my house so I have a really easier access to it and it looks so much better. You can also build more shipping bins around the areas you frequent the most on your farm, so you don't need to go to the single one at the top of the farm, saving you so much time in the process. For all of those starting players out there, I have a tip that you should always use and that is always check the trash cans around Pelican Town. You can get a lot of useful items which can help you for the farm or for the community center bundles as well. The trash cans can have a variety of items, but for some they are influenced by the area they are in. Like for example, the trash can at Cleans can get you random ores, the saloon one can get you a variety of food, and the Jojo Mart one can have a lot of Jojo goods. There is also the rare trash can hat which you can get randomly if you are lucky enough. This can be a really nice source of items as well, so try to check them frequently, but be careful though, not to be spotted by the villagers since they will dislike you for going around their trash. When you start off for the first time, you're given a basic watering can to water all of the crops on your farm, where after a while it can get a bit repetitive. The solution to this are the sprinklers, which are one of the best items in the game. You can get them as you level up farming and these are really awesome for sure. They will water your farm every day in a given radius which will save you so much time and energy that you can use for something else. For tip number 36, I wanted to mention the deconstructor, which was added in the 1.5 update. And for me, this is one of the most useful items which were added in the 1.5 update. You can purchase it from Mr. Key Shop on Ginger Island for 20 key gems and it has an amazing use where if you put a crafted item in it, it will give you the most expensive item which was used to craft the said item. You can use this to your advantage to get some really great crafting resources that you would need to farm a lot more otherwise. I made a whole video on it, so feel free to check it out and I will leave a link for it in the description below. Also, when you start off with a brand new farm, you should always diversify the crops you have. Some will be needed for the community bundles, while others may be needed for cooking or for some of the villagers' requests, which can be in the same season or even off-season. So it's always good to have a couple of patches with other crops while the majority of the crops should be the ones which can get you a lot of money in return. This can really help you out in the long run. For tip number 38, I wanted to show you a way you can get some extra food for your animals. If by any chance you ran out of food, if you buy grass starters from Pierre and plant them on the last day of a given season, excluding fall, overnight the grass will grow so fast, 
so you'll have huge quantities of food for your animals, without any need of money, so you will save a lot of gold in the process. Mayor Lewis used to be really happy when we would forget our Grange display items, where he would probably use it to fuel his gold statue. But now with the 1.5 update, if we by any chance forget our Grange display, we have the option to recover our items in the lost and found box at Mayor Lewis's house. You can just go pick them up whenever you want and make Mayor Lewis unhappy in the process as well. Tip number 40 covers fishing, where there is an interesting mechanic that not many know about, and that is you can angle your casts to the left or right. This is a really helpful tip for all of those bubbles that form away from the player in inaccessible locations, and with this trick you can easily get to some of those and get the fish as a prize. Even I didn't know about this trick and I found it by accident while fishing once, so it can help you out a lot. Another thing that some of the players out there may not know, and it's really helpful, is the community center icon in the inventory menu. For most of the players they use this to check which items are needed for the bundles and for which ones they should keep an eye out. But did you know that if you had an item that was needed for the bundles and if you moused over that item, the community center icon would pulsate indicating that you should save that item. This is really helpful as you won't need to constantly look around the bundles to check for the items which are missing and you need them as well. The next tip is one that I would hide from Pierre, but Joja can be sometimes helpful. One of the seeds that Joja sells are way cheaper than the one that Pierre sells, which are the sunflower seeds, so buying them from Joja at the start can save you quite a lot of gold in the process. And did I mention that Joja works every day, while Pierre doesn't work on Wednesdays, so this can help you out a lot if you're low on seeds. Tip number 43 is about gathering wood, because sometimes it can be really tedious and slow, but I have a solution to that problem, introducing the newly added wood chippers that can be used to get wood in exchange for hardwood. This may sound expensive, but with a 1.5 update, getting hardwood was made much more easier, where you could use the mahogany seed to plant a lot of trees on your farm, which can multiply, and you get 12 hardwood per tree. If you put one hardwood in the wood chipper, you can get 5 to 20 regular wood, so having a bunch of these on the farm can really boost your wood production and help you out in the long run. This way is a really efficient way to gather wood, since the regular wood will be used more often than the hardwood for crafting, and you would also need it in higher quantities as well. For tip number 44, coffee is your friend. Well, the speed boost it gives you can really change your gameplay so you should always use it whenever you can. A combination of spicy eels and coffee also works, where it adds even more speed, and if you're traveling by horse, it will be further increased as well. So, I always suggest, whenever you can, use coffee. And the last tip that I have for you is, keep an eye out on the special days in all of the seasons, excluding the winter season. In the spring, there is a salmon berry season, from the 15th to the 18th of spring, in the summer season, you get extra forageables at the beach from the 12th till the 14th. And in the fall season, we have the blackberry season, which lasts from the 8th till the 11th. You should always keep an eye out for these, as they will be a great source of income and energy for all of the beginner farms out there. And having the gatherer profession can always boost this income as well, since you will get more out of each but everyone, that was it for my 45 tips and tricks that I made for you. Some of these are already well known by most players out there, and some not that much, but I really hope this video helps you out in your own adventures in Stardew Valley. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel, since it helps me out a lot. In any case, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe.